Okay, rapid session today. Let's probably go for half hour, so probably just two games. Let's just attack the pawn. And as we do, just attack in the center, just responding to the way they open. Looks fairly similar all the time at this moment. And very simplified. I do wish that the over the board games were this simplified. You know, when they're just bringing the knight out and capturing and the pawn capturing, etc. Would make life a whole lot simpler. So we x-ray through to the queen. And develop the knight. I'm going to go inwards. No, maybe go outwards. Go. Castle. So all very simple. It's very rare I see this type of opening in over the board gameplay. It must be just too basic and babyish and probably just ends up being a draw or something like that. It's very rare you see this. Attacking the queen, I'm going to bring the bishop back, queen back, sorry. So we have plenty of time, we've got 10 second increment, so 15 minutes in total for the max. Let's go here with the rook. I'm still moving quick, aren't I? But it's because I've seen these, I'm familiar with this pattern. And the question that always gets asked is, do I bring the bishop back here to bring it here, attack in the center? does look a little bit better bringing it back here to come here it's not like biting on any stone wall type situation and bringing it here is not too bad either it's just the knight can come and attack it so i'm actually going to bring it here because it does look fairly okay being able to attack here i'm going on the proviso that they're going to attack the bishop with the pawn like they usually do because they're taking the time now i think they're wanting to get their bishop out do they double the pawns? Gives them more pawns in the centre. That might be what they're thinking. But, as you know, I don't know what they're thinking. They could do anything. And they're just going for an exchange. So we'll just take the bishop off the board. Knight is momentarily in a shoddy position. But we can come and attack it. Our knight can attack their queen. If they do that, they do have like a two on one situation. So they could take the pawn. We take, their rook takes, queen takes. I think we win out there. So we jump in with the knight. Glorious square if the queen's looking to get a bit fancy or something, facing our king. Okay, moving a little bit quick but it's because I'm kind of familiar with the pattern that it's giving us at the minute it looks more um, advantageous looking so the Queen's going back protecting the square it doesn't want the fork so for a brief moment we do have potential for putting pressure onto this pawn the Knight is on the rim we could bring the Queen here it's nothing going the Bishop does have this diagonal as well which is quite nice so attack the knight, maybe the knight decides, no, I'm blocking this potential attack here. Knight takes, queen takes, queen takes, we double the pawns. <clears throat> but it doesn't go anything like that. I mean, I do like this one, sort of longer term development. It develops the rook, looking to put some pressure on the pawn, gives them something to think about. The knight at the minute is disabled, but it can come here and attack the queen, but the knight can take at the minute. Do have attacking the rook as well with the bishop. So many options. But I think overworking the queen might not be to our favour. Attacking the knight, knight just goes here. I do like that aspect because we can just take and... Shall we go with this one? Let's go with this one because the knight looks like it's... Or it just simply defends. If it defends then do we play with something like... Well maybe not that... Moving the knight out of the way to try and go for this cheap thing. Don't think that'll come off. Bishop will come here. But trying to give them something to think about. Long-term benefits, that would be nice. But they might not be thinking about that. 
so it's not really giving them anything to think about so that's why i've chosen to attack and take i'm assuming the queen's going to take we get to double the pawns in front of the king so we do that so it's a slight weakness then the rook can attack the pawn here it's got no protection obviously the rook comes to protect Okay, so we don't have a dark square bishop. And let's see, white squares, rook rover, attacking the king. Going to bring the rook over and see if we can. I mean, it's easily defended. It can go here or go here. So rook in the center of the board doesn't have any business being there, unless, of course, it's to your benefit. We go one potential for attacking the pawn but the king's really blocking it but is it to our benefit or should we be trying to push onto here no it's got too many pawns just sit the bishop in here blocking the pawn he does have a white square bishop so it might not stay there for long i think they'll look to try and trade it off it's looking to attack the bishop so we put the check on the king, king goes, well, so what, I'll just move to the side. Maybe not onto a white square because we've got a white square bishop. But I don't think they'll do that because the bishop can actually take the pawn if he goes to the side. So I think they'll go here. Does that help our case? So we go here, we go there protecting the pawn still. Rook really is not getting in there because the king is there. Can't come across here because the bishop's guarding that square. Maybe we'll come back and attack this pawn. We attack this pawn straight away, the king comes down. Then we attack the king again. And he still wants to protect this pawn, so he'll come back. It's giving them things to think about. Hmm, I think we'll go with that. We will go with that rather than, we know this is going to be coming, but we can bring the bishop here. Yes, so we'll attack the rook. So that gives us tempo to actually grab this pawn now, because he's going to have to move his rook. So with them targeting this pawn, but obviously the king's going to defend by attacking. We can't take this pawn. But we can take this, oh can't take it because of that there right okay so we'll take this pawn first so the rook is defending this pawn is there another rook rover type thing coming here it's actually coming down for the rook right so we're not going to take this we looks like we're coming back down yes coming back down a little bit and he's probably going to push his pawn to stop our rook from putting a check on the king. I think that should be okay. Let's just bring the rook back. Double dorset maybe. Might be too slow. Oh no, what I've done. I've given him a rook. Oh. <laughs> Silly me. Oh, I've giving him a rook after all that lovely calculation but I suppose we can go here and we haven't given the rook after all because we've got the x-ray through to the king so we'll get the bishop off the board so we get a bishop so we'll be up a minor piece if they do that it looks juicy swing it across Pawn comes down to defend, we hit the um, bishop, it can't go anywhere. That's right, isn't it? Yep, tempo's right, comes there, we go there. Has to drop the pawn or move the king, if he moves the king we take the bishop. Yep. Uh, just when we thought there was a mistake being made. Looks okay. not going for it so what is he attempting to do so we were going to just put a check on doesn't want to give this pawn up we move the rook up and what else is there let's just put the check on for now
Glides across, maybe. No, he's gone back, so we can go and attack one of the pawns. He can't defend both of them. Can he? No, because the king's blocking the rook, but the rook can come and defend. No, not there. Defend this, we'll get a check on. It looks like the luck is on our side. Briefly, anyway. Oh! I could have just gone here, couldn't I? I could have just gone there and got his rook off the board. I'm going greedy munching for pawns. So I'll just sit and wait to see what they do and um, we won't be so quick with our calculation to make a cheap move. Would that have been better though? Yeah, then he comes here, then we take. Yeah, so he's come to protect, so we'll just put the check on. We could have still done that move. But we might as well hold off of that. And this looks... Look, he's still there. Come here. Go there again. Probably won't work this time, but uh, we'll go here with the rook and see if we can get his rook off the board. Plus two. End game. Maybe we can see if it works. It's just that you have to work a little bit harder when the pieces are traded off. You probably can see what we're trying to do. We may just bring the bishop here. Rook's feeling a little bit redundant, but we do have a two on one if we get the bishop moved as well. But he does have two on one protection, which is the rook and the king. Maybe not running for that one too much. Alright, so we can actually hit the rook. Oh, we could hit the rook. That's a bit fancy, that dude. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's fancy. So we could hit the rook. He doesn't have to take though, he can just go here. But it's slightly different because the king's is not there. We'd start pushing pawns up. Start delaying things. <laughs> Put my thinking cap on. Let's hit the rook. And if he does take, then we're on the um, rook for a brief moment. Just bring the bishop back. I think we can afford to trade down because we're plus two. Doesn't mean we've won the game because we're plus two. But if we trade down, then it's um, advantageous for us in the pawn in the game. I think anyway. Just going to say, like I said, though, you don't have to trade. So we're hitting the rook. And we're coming back here. Yep. So he is in front of our king. So he's going to come with this style. But the rook isn't there. So that's okay. We're going to push the pawn. Now he's going to push here. But we do have the pawn that can replicate. But I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. Attack this pawn. He'd have to get his rook around here somewhere to get a checkmate. If this takes, we can just take here. So he's probably looking to go here. So we could take with this pawn. Yeah, so we could take with this pawn. That's probably better, isn't it? Because the bishop's blocking the way. If we go this way, it's giving them opportunity to come here to try and go for. It's not really a checkmate because the rook is here anyway. But we want our rook doing other things, don't we? So I'm going to take this way inwards. So they might try and do a dance here, here, and try and get the rook coming round somehow. I'm getting the check on the king here. So being very mindful of that. So as soon as they move the bishop, I'm going to move the king. 
Then it stops the bishop from coming here. He's, oh, he's attacking our rook. Oh, <laughs> so we do we lose tempo. So we'd have to bring the rook here to kind of stop the bishop from coming here. So they're not doing that at the minute. They're actually defending the pawn. So if we attack the bishop, maybe he comes there, but then his bishop attacks our rook. So we might as well go with this move, might we? Yeah, let's go with this move because we know potentially that's what they're going to be attempting to do. They might not be thinking anything like that. Okay, so now we can push this pawn. In fact, push it up even more. Just to make space for the king to come onto the dark square. Have to be very careful when they do it. If they do a king move, they run our bishop. So we need to be bringing the bishop back into the game or either attacking the pawn to give them something to think about. So there's some shifty moves that can kick in. So as you can see, I'm trying to just block off what they're attempting to do at the same time. I'm slowly, incrementally just developing my pieces up the board. And if we go here, which is better, I think, because it stops the rook from coming here and here. They should start running out of juice unless they start what the rook can take. To any tempo wins, apart from this king coming here, we need to be, like we said, bringing the bishop down. Just thinking, is there an attack on his bishop at all? Nope. Rook is on a white square, but we're on the other side of the board. Dangerously on the white square with the rook. Probably come here rather than there because he still wants to protect the pawn from the rook. But he does have a touch because the bishop can hit the king. He can bring the rook down. But for activity's sake, probably just put in a check on the king again. Maybe we go here. Yeah, a little touch. Oh, we can go up. And they're probably thinking, well, we're going to come down with the rook and start taking these pawns off here. The bishop's probably going to do something like this. So attacking a pawn gives us something to think about. Get it onto a dark square. But then, it's not doing that. So this pawn can't really be taken by the rook. Well, it can, but it'll just get taken. Right, so we can push the pawn. I would assume he would take, but then we're opening up space in front of our king. Let's attack this um, pawn because we're going to get hit by the king moving at some point. It does advance the pawns down. Maybe we can hit it. I don't think he's going to push, probably take, take. Yep, so maybe we can hit it, like we said. He does push, take, take. Let's just hit it. Got plenty of time now, so try and find the better moves because you never know, we might lose tempo with a move they make that makes us have to do something and it dishevels our position on the board.
I might just leave it and just bring the rook here. Something. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know what they're going to do. Bishop again. Little touch on the king. And at this point, I'm very mindful that I don't want the rook coming here and having space. So if we dropped here and see the rook just coming here, ready to come down. So maybe the king's probably best sat on the dark square. Let's have a nice shot here with the bishop. Okay, it gives me something to think about. And they've gone for it. So it does give me something to think about. And I can just attack the bishop. And where's it going? It's not going to go there. It's not going to go here. It's not going to go there. It could come sit here. But it's not really dynamic in that sense is it it's not really mashing us up so i'm going to just bring the bishop rook back and attack the bishop these types of games these are the games that i'm needing for the tournaments and the league games you know over the board because they're so easily messed up. I so easily mess these up. And it's usually just one one move. You know, the one move. But we said that we're not worried about this. We can hit the bishop but then he takes. I'm just taking this. I think he's gonna take with this one because he wants this um non-opposition pawn thing. So I was thinking of that ages ago when I pushed the pawn up. If they didn't, then we're just going to take. If we got the time. Because they obviously were attacking our rook. So this pawn's taking. Oh, well that evens it up, doesn't it? So we could hit the bishop with the pawn. Don't really want them on white squares, but I suppose it helps our white square bishop. Sit the bishop. Don't need to overthink that. Okay, so they're moving quick now. And we can hit this pawn, but it's just going to drop. But then the bishop can take. If it does take, it does open up our king. So I'm not really a fan of that, but I think we might have to do that. Bishop attacks the bishop. It's probably looking for a draw type thing. Oh, look at that position. That's why they moved there so fast. He's looking to get the rook off the board. <laughs> it's a good job we're taking our time with the calculation looking at what they can do and what we can do ah yes very good so we just need to move the rook onto a dark square or move it around here to stop that action and work our way around the back or do we just simply support this pawn does have poor majority on this side just here a little bit. Might be overthinking it. Just bring the rook up. Onto the dark square. And the bishop goes and puts the check on the king. Bring the king down onto the dark square. Rook comes across looking to try and get this square. And bring the rook here. But then the rook comes here attacking the pawn. Giving us things to think about. So there's lots of little tiny things that are going to happen in this game. Constantly just giving giving me things to think about. So I'm not classing them as major things. They are major if they do like get like um, what they were attempting there, you know, with the bishop. And similarly, if they're attacking our bishop and the bishop's got no protection on.
what did we say i think they'll still do this even though they've taken a long time over the move because they were tunnel vision to do that move anyway it's just upsetting i've moved around oh they haven't done we take the bishop takes we attack the bishop what happens at the bishop the bishop goes no i'm putting a check on your king we have to move the king then they take the pawn and do we take with our pawn i suppose we should because we don't want the bishop overworked blocking this pawn this one of those where it's at too hearty dude there puts the check on the king move down no mate i don't think it's too hearty is it let's just attack the bishop it looks simple didn't want his bishop you know owning square you know owning squares and stuff like that we're kind of managing these this area at the minute that's why i'm plumping for this simple move oh no 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 that's not what we said but i think it's still okay because the pawn would end up here anyway if even if they had done the bishop attacking the king And they have done. That's what we said. So we're going to go here. So it's ending in the same position. It's just that the move order, they did it differently by actually capturing the pawn. But with the rook supporting the bishop, we were fairly okay. So this is a fantastic end game to practice this. And the opponent's not giving up. They're waiting for the, that mistake. So the rook could come and put two on one on this pawn. Well, just thinking out loud. That's the pressure that could be put on there if the rook got here and um, the bishop was attacking it somehow. But it looks like we're fairly okay. So having to think about these pawns here. But how do I get these pawns up? That's the question. I think it's going to have to start with these pawns here. But I really don't want to open up the king... Although the bishop is protecting this area from the rook. Not that easy. It's not that straightforward. Could easily end up being a draw. Because it's about the position, isn't it? His rook is defending here. Bishop's defending that area. If we did hit, they take, we take, we have a passer, we have this, well we've got two passers already, but we'll have to wait to see what they're going to do, because I don't want to over calculate on anything, let's hope that they make a mistake of some sort. So yeah, the neg negatives are the rook comes here, oh, it's, um, just blocking the pawn off. Just blocking the pawn off. Maybe it's time for the rook to go here and here. As soon as we move here, his king's just going to come here, stopping that. But then the bishop puts a check on. Mm -hmm. Let's make the move. It's scary that it's going onto a white square, but uh, the bishop's blocked off at the minute. Would be ideal if we did get that then we'd be able to get the rook off the board but that's not going to happen so we have to settle for this this going back not meaty i mean we could attack this pawn couldn't we don't even need to do that the king comes here go and attack the pawn which it has done so we'll go and attack the pawn looks like we're going to get that pawn off the board Mm, yeah. Bishop attacks the bishop. Because it's like thinking I've got an x ray through, so I have to take. Oh no, no, that's the position we didn't want. 
but we can just move here can't we and then he'll just bring the bishop and put a check on we'll go here bring the bishop and put a check on and we can drop down Yeah, giving me things to think about. Could push the pawn. Rook comes down, puts a check on. I think we have to keep it simple. Could move the king here. But he's going to come and attack the pawn. Let's move the king. There's no rush. A bit annoying if they do that. Then we have to move. We'll win a bit of tempo, then the bishop moves back again. Gives us time to take the pawn. Rook comes down for the pawn. We come back up again with the king. Attacking the rook. Yeah, so if we go down, we're in the count now. Go down. Bishop moves again, but is he blocking my king? I, I, I haven't fashioned anything else, no. Or does he just go and attack the bishop? No, he's not going to do any of that. Come back here. We take the pawn. The rook comes here. King comes here. The bishop attacks. No can do. Yeah, so we can take the pawn. Bit of counting, hopefully that works. It does look like it works. Start to panic thinking, well, did I go to school and did, did my counting actually work in school? Was my maths okay? My maths was all right. But chess is a funny game. Sometimes you do a count and then you miss out on a particular manoeuvre. That messes your count up. We've got to check on the king, obviously, with our rook. Because they could come here. We don't have to attack it straight away. We've got to check. Then he goes and attacks the rook. It's nothing meaty, is it, really? So we're not going to swing across here because he'll just take with a check. But we can save the check and just bring the king here when he comes there. The time is running out. It's a 10 second increment anyway, so they, they, if you bullet the moves out, you get that time back dead quick. Not gone for it. It's just moved it off the line because it doesn't want the rook taking the, um, the rook off the board. Some sort of tempo. I think they're still focused on this pawn, so let's not be getting overexcited. We come here, king moves. Like I said, I think it's probably just attack. I don't think they want to stay on a white square, do they? So go there, then attack the bishop. Bishop goes somewhere. Oh, it can come in here, can't it? That's a bit annoying. It can come in there, as this rook can come here then. And then we're getting chased around. We do have a far flank, far flunked. I don't think there's Hmm, let's put the check on. Put the check on. I'm checking my position. So position checks, captures threats, support, blocking, back to position. Well, they have gone there on the white square. We can attack the bishop, but I think I'm sending them into a nice bit of activity. So the bishop comes here. And they've got that square. Go check on the king. King just moves. Ah, hold on, hold on, hold on. So if we push this pawn then the bishop is managing the squ this square on the diagonal. So we're not going to have that funky threat. But... 
bishop gets threatened in any way, I'm going to lose my rook. So I push the pawn. Say they take, we take. And the rook comes here attacking the pawn. Comes there, attacks the pawn. We attack the bishop. I think I'm making this too arty, you know. I do like this bishop protecting that bit there, so I'm going to go with that bit. So I don't want to get caught in convoluted little check button type things. Does take. But this is the point where I'm thinking, well, you know, does it actually do anything? Well, now we're seeing the picture. Is it looking any different? I think we take him. Oh, just drops here. Next rain through to the bishop. We need to move the rook so the rook can come down and defend the bishop but then is pinning through to our bishop yeah so they're doing the moves that we're talking about so we attack their bishop like we said maybe he takes the pawn and he's on our bishop as well let's attack the bishop probably goes to safety There's no defending that pawn apart from the rook coming here and defending. I don't know how good that is. The time is definitely running out. I think it's good this player's played on because it's um, this is one of the annoying things you're playing over the ball. The players just play on and play on, you know, which is, you know, I suppose it's a good thing because you never know if the opponent's going to make a mistake or not. And if you're playing for a team, you, you want to like put up the best performance in for your team. And if you get lucky and they do make a mistake in these types of end games, then you quids in, aren't you? So they have taken, taken with the aspect of, well, he's getting my bishop as well. But I could save my bishop. Or I could put a check on, well, mm, yeah, okay. Put a check here, then he loses his bishop, doesn't he? Oh no, but I lose my bishop anyway. Don't I? Yeah, if I go there, he moves the king just to here. Then if I take his bishop, he takes our bishop with the king. Hmm. Do we keep the bishop or do we take? We've got two pawns. Should we not be greedy? We shouldn't be greedy, should we? I think we should just trade down. But how do we protect, we are protect that both of the pawns? That's the question. How do we protect both of the pawns? We take. He takes. And both of these pawns are getting hit one of them's gonna get taken because he can just drop here we've only got one pawn left Ooh. now this might be where we need to use some science and not take a check on the king trying to get something for free <laughs> a check on the king he moves he can go anywhere That's not a good one, is it? Takes. Takes. I can't save him. Well, Rook comes across protecting this pawn. Rook comes down to attack this pawn. King comes here. 
and his king starts. I think that might work. That might work then. Let's take and then bring the rook across here and bring the king here. Wow. This is hurting my head. So he's got two pawns to sort of think about whether we can get them up or not. I think that's a bit, it's a bit much for both the king and the rook to be defending. Unless of course he just puts the rook here and then the king comes and attacks the rook here and we lose one somehow. Mm, I don't know, it could work. I think it should be all right. Okay, so they're not actually attacking the pawn. So I'm going to bring the king here. Time wise, this is giving them a lot to think about having, you know, two pass pawns to contend with on both sides of the board. Okay, let's go. No, let's go here. But how do I get these pawns up? That's the question. Maybe there or maybe here. So this one might, okay, so they've gone, let's put a check on. Oh, that might have been wrong. That's wrong because it's just gonna come here, isn't it? Yeah, I was thinking if this goes up, then we can start pushing this, but he's gonna put a two on one on this pawn. Mm. Ooh, interesting. Interesting, let's go up. It's going to drop to put a two on one here. Not drops. Oh no. But we're on the rook. He takes. No panic. I have got plenty of time. Like I've said, it's going to be a lot for them. Well, I'm hoping. <laughs> it's going to be a lot for them to contend with two pass pawns on both sides of the board. Although I did think he was going to be putting a 2 on 1 on here. Don't know how we would have managed that really. He is doing the 2 on 1. Yeah. Put the check on the king. But we do lose this pawn. Maybe. Thinking he moves because he wants to stay. Oh, he's not doing that. Right, okay. Ooh, so we push the pawn up. Don't know why I'm panicking. Because at the end of the day, one of them is going to get promoted, isn't it? I'm going to bring the rook back. So now they've split their rook and the king up, which is a good thing. But there's no two on ones at the minute. King come back down again. Oh, he's going for a draw, you know. So I'm going to be swinging backwards and forwards, and these rooks now is on our own. Let's put a check on. So maybe we can push this pawn up, but he's going to get a check on. Put a check on the king. It's slowly advancing up the board a little bit. And let's bring the rook back. Comes back down again to be annoying with the king. Okay, so if we swing across this time, he's going to hit us here. We can't push the pawn further up. Could go for a draw, attacking here. Which is not ideal. Let's go here. Rook's, rook can't come here. So it's going to give us that time to be able to push this pawn up. This kink may consider going across, but we can push the pawn. I think it's too much. It's too much for, you know, oh, and he's coming for the king. Push. We might have to give this pawn up. This is looking a little bit livelier. We have to move and give the pawn up. So thankfully the king is on the other side of the board. 
See, look how the time's run. It's 10 second increment. It's not like a blitz or bullety thing. Although I do have zeros, zero increment on them ones. Got to check on. Let's move the king a little bit closer. So happy there, king is all the way over here. Let's push. And we should be able to get a queen. This king's thinking, how can I hide my king now? Because I know exactly what they're going to do. But that's going to be putting a check on. Squeeze here. Not doing that so we can just go and get the um queen because obviously it's going to be a rook against the king put the check on excellent and they're timed out lovely game I don't think I need to go through any analysis of that one. I think we did it to death during the game. Yeah, nice game.